Hey, what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and welcome to the actual fourth Slime Keep devlog. And I want to remind you guys that I am hosting a game jam, and we've already had over 400 people join, which is insane, and the game jam will be starting in about less than a week, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description. But before we do get in the devlog guys, I want to let you guys know that this devlog is going to be structured a little bit more differently than all my other devlogs, because most of my other devlogs, I have a bunch of small tasks that I'm aiming to accomplish, and I usually get a lot of those done. But in this devlog, it felt more like I just had some big rock that I had to mine, and just each day I would make a tiny bit of progress with each day. So this devlog might feel like a little bit more just one big task, so I apologize if it's not as entertaining as stuff, but I still hope you enjoy the devlog. So before I started reworking my weapon system, I started working on a few changes to the enemies. See, the thing is, right now my slimes just feel kind of plain, and they really don't feel like slimes, they just feel like something that's just moving towards you. So to fix this, I updated the slime movement script, and I made some new animations for the slime. So now as you can see, they kind of squish down, and then they move towards you, I have a bunch of variables that I can change, to change how long they move for, how fast they move, and all that kind of stuff. While I am really happy about how this system turned out, it unfortunately did kind of break the way that I go about changing the slime sprite, so I'm going to have to fix that in another video, but I decided to take my eyes off of it and just kind of work on these new kind of slime explosions, because I got a lot of suggestions saying that my slime death animation wasn't that good. I totally agree, so for each slime I kind of had to make its own death animation, and so yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Unfortunately, I didn't really get a chance to put these into Unity just because of the issues I said before, but hopefully next episode I can actually get them imported and working and rework my slime kind of system, but again, no promises because I don't know what's going to lie ahead of me. So now let's move on to what I pretty much spent my whole entire week on, reworking the weapon system. And I know you guys are probably really tired of me talking about weapons because I've been doing it for like pretty much the past three videos, but pretty much I got so many suggestions to rework my weapon system using scriptable objects, and I totally agree. See, the old code that I was writing was really, really bad. I relied on bools and just super terrible ways about going about things. I have to admit, it's totally my fault. I just was really not the best developer, honestly. I still have a lot to learn about scriptable objects, classes, all that kind of stuff to make my code much more efficient and clean. So the first thing that I did was I created a new weapons scriptable object. I was going to use the scriptable object to store all of the data for pretty much every single weapon inside of my game. So I wouldn't have to use bools and all that kind of stuff to handle weapons. After a while of coding and changing around my weapon shooting script, I kind of had this slot that I could insert a weapon scriptable object and use that data to change the values inside of my weapon shooting script. I then made weapon scriptable objects for all the other weapons inside of my game. This was great, but the problem is I didn't really know how I could go about inside a script of manually switching my scriptable object and updating my weapon. Since I knew I wanted to update my weapon, I had to think about how I was going to go about swapping weapons, and while I was thinking about this, I kind of thought that I needed to update the way I'm kind of handling my weapons going left and right, because pretty much right now I have a script and I have to just, you know, activate and disactivate two different weapons when one's on the left and one's on the right of the player, which is really, really ineffective. And that's what I'm doing this video for, is to clean up this really messy code. So I pretty much made a script where instead of having my player just, you know, walk wherever he is, he actually kind of faces the mouse cursor. I think it's really cool because now it's kind of more feels more like a roguelike. And so you can walk backwards and everything just looks much more natural and it flips the gun without having need to worry about anything else. Now I had to tackle the task of updating my weapon. And this was quite a difficult task for me, especially because I wasn't too familiar with scriptable objects, and this was my first really actual time of using them. I pretty much had a lot of work to do, and I was really, really lost about how to go about this. I originally tried swapping out the prefabs and the scriptable objects, but I just couldn't get anything working, and it just took me so many hours to figure out, and my weapon swapping system that I originally wrote was pretty bad. But fortunately for me, there's a guy in my Discord server named Waza, or Waza, who really helped me out through this whole process. And throughout this whole entire scriptable objects and all this stuff that I was doing, weapon manager, totally helped me out and gave me many ideas on how to go about things. So I can't thank him enough. I couldn't have done this without him, like throughout this whole entire process. So he kind of gave me the idea of instead of having, you know, multiple weapon prefabs, just having one weapon and I'm just swapping out the artwork, you know, the bullets, all that kind of stuff, which is really, really smart. Then I wouldn't have to move you know, worry about having a bunch of different prefabs, I could just swap out the values for one weapon, which is really, really, really smart. So I started working on this kind of logic for the system, and eventually after a few hours of work, 
I kind of had it so I could drag in a weapon uh, script or weapon scriptable object and after I dragged that into my slot it would update the artwork, all that kind of stuff, the firing rate for my weapon. Which I think is pretty cool. In this way I don't have to have any weapon prefabs, I just have one weapon in my scene which is really really cool and really efficient. Now this was all great, but it pretty much required on a whole entire rework on the way I handle bullets and my whole entire bullet manager script. As you can see, whenever I shoot a bullet, it's constantly updating my number of bullets inside of my weapon script. The thing is, I couldn't store my number of bullets I've shot, because pretty much what I want to do, whenever I switch weapons, I want to make sure I store how many bullets I have left in that weapon. I couldn't do this with inscriptable objects. Now I was totally lost about how I could go about handling this. I also created this weapon pickup system, which I'll talk about in just a second. And as you can see, the bullet UI is just totally messed up. Now since I pretty much had no clue about how I'd go about storing bullets, I called upon Waza again and he came out with this really good idea of how I'd make a class which would store my, my primary and secondary weapons, and then I'd also use that class to swap between these weapons, and then inside those classes it would store how many bullets I've shot and have left in that bullet, which is really really you know effective way of going about this, I don't have to you know do anything in update, and not only is it really good for storing bullets, but also just swapping between weapons. So I created this bullet class which is going to store your current weapon and how many bullets that weapon has. This class has two slots in the array, so you can have a primary and a secondary weapon, but I might increase that to three or four slots in the future. So I have my pistol and my default slot number one, but to get the value of my slot number two, I created this weapon pickup script which I talked about earlier, and it pretty much just chooses a random weapon from an array, and then you can once you walk over that weapon, if you have enough bits, and it'll have a random price, which I can between between two different values inside of the weapon scriptable object, it'll take that weapon and it'll put it in your second weapon slot. And then you can just press space to swap between your weapons, and this works pretty well because it'll keep the amount of bullets you have shot and it'll update everything just perfectly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I can walk over weapons, pick them up, shoot them around, and it'll store everything. And this whole process was really cool to learn about because I've never learned about classes before and I actually got to use them and it was really nice to have Waza help me through them and just teach me more about them. And yeah, it felt really really accomplishing when I got this done and it's a much more efficient way about swapping weapons. I now wanted to work on updating my UI because while the values were updating, the UI was still pretty messed up. I started off by kind of changing the UI to a more transparent theme which I think looks much better overall. While this was a nice update, my UI was still not functioning as well as I wanted it to. Pretty much, as you can see, whenever I shoot a weapon, the bullets are just kind of way too close to each other. There's a lot of problems. Sometimes the you know box of the bullets isn't too high, and the weapons are just kind of squashed and stretched, and just it's very messed up overall. So I redrew a bunch of my weapons as UI things, and so now you can see, you know, pretty much they were all different sizes. Now I made them all the same size, so they'll actually update correctly. And while I'm here, I just want to talk about how much, like, this weapon script is pretty good for my game. Just thinking about it, I used to have a bullet manager, a weapon swapping system, all this kind of stuff with a bunch of bulls, update loops, but now it's all just in this one compact script, which makes everything so much easier and better. And on top of that, I use the same kind of weapon logic on my bullet managers, so I only have one bullet manager and I'm just updating the values from there. I don't have to make a ton of different bullet manager prefabs and all this UI and redo everything. It's just one UI and same with the weapon, which makes everything so much easier and less clunky in my scene. Getting back on track, the way I solved my bullets being different sizes and stuff is I just had one long list or er, array of bullets and I would just pretty much update their sizes from there. But the thing that was working for a while, the problem was is you know some of my bullets were bigger than the others and they're all the same spacing. And I know I probably could have just made multiple different, you know, a spacing script and go from there. But instead I kind of just redrew the sprites as smaller sizes so they look a little bit more spaced out. I know this probably isn't the best, you know, solution as sometimes pixel art gets a little scaled down, but I went with it for now, and I might need to change it, you know, actually edit it in the future, but that's just how I got through that for now. I also made a bunch of different bullets backgrounds, which I'd update depending on the weapon that you have. And so that's pretty much where I am right now. There's still a lot of issues that I want to fix in the future, such as sometimes the shot point is kind of messed up with my weapons while shooting on different weapons, and there's just a few things I want to fix. But I just want to make sure I could get out this video and in a timely manner, just keep it to a weekly upload schedule, so hopefully I can fix those in probably a future video. 
I'm also sorry if this video was a little too technical and just had, you know, wasn't as satisfying as a lot of my other videos just because I had to do a lot of nitty gritty work under the hood and, you know, update my whole entire scripts. But I do think that this update was definitely necessary, even if it wasn't that entertaining to watch or not. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, I also want to announce that I did make Rachel board public, so that link will be in the description if you want to check it out. And so yeah, uh, thank you for all the support we've been getting recently. If you want to subscribe or leave a like, it'd also be very much appreciated. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.